Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Uh, um. <laughs> The very first thing I ever saw this lady in was in The Crow. You can see her in Crank High Voltage, Southland Sales, Red Corner, so many things. But today we are talking about Barbie Rehab. Please welcome Bai Ling. Bai, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Very uh, excited to all of, meet you and all of your fans. Oh, I'm excited to talk to you. This has been a long time coming. The series comes to Tubi this May. You, Tom Sizemore, Janice Dickinson. Uh, it's been described as celebrity rehab meets Big Brother. Uh, this is a fun seven episode series. So congratulations on it. Thank you so much. It is crazy. It is, uh, as you know, I was in a real rehab, right? This is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And but it's so much fun because my character just like comic, just like a wild, but, but smart, but a lot of sense of humor. It's just so entertaining. I think people will laugh. It was so much fun. It's just a lot of joy. Yeah, it's interesting that, that the creators of the show picked Barbie as as the thing to be rehabilitated from. But it kind of makes sense. I mean, 60 years of Barbie, there's so many different toys. There's so many different cars. There's so many different clothing outfits. Uh, Barbie essentially is the first supermodel. Really? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> That's the way I describe it. I mean, if you can buy her so many toys and cars and beach houses and everything else. I think especially today, all the social media, all the virtual, like how we live life. Mm -hmm. I think everybody needs to go to rehab, but in a rehab, that is fun. There's wisdom, but fun, a lot of joy, a lot of uh, actually seduction. Like my character is goofy and she's funny. She does everything, so, uh, not follow the rule. Very different because she says she landed from moon, just like myself. But so much fun. I would do a lot of uh, spontaneous things. A lot of human being would not do. I would do because she's going to rehab. She can because she can do anything because otherwise she will not go there. So I think it's something I brought to to the show. Uh, if my fans or anybody like me, it's a lot of you say crank too. A lot of this this spontaneous magic like humor and and behaviors are are really really fun. And a lot of people do, especially for young people. I think. They'll do what I do. So that's something I contributed uh, a pop culture, you know, fashion and, and the way of thinking. And, and bold, it's bold, it's um, sexy, it's uh, provocative. It's also a lot of fun on top of all of that. So you guys pull something off in seven episodes that most people can't pull off in three seasons. I'm sorry, say again. Oh, I said because the way the show is, you pull off so so much in seven episodes that some series can't pull off in three seasons. Yeah, a lot of uh, series. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I don't really, I'm in a rehab, but I'm not really following anything. I don't think I understand anything. So I have a lot of things like with Tom Sizemore, I start to, his character does start to seduce uh basically he's the doctor i think has started to seduce him i think for me in my mind just in her own wild um world with all these strange people these barbies i don't know if they're real or not real but to them i'm not real anyway so they're to me it's not real so everything's serious but not serious it's like all uh, like a dream like a fun beautiful sexy dream actually but there's a lot of messages, like a lot of people are mental problem, you know, like uh, uh, issues with their mental health. I think this told a lot of stories through different characters, how they deal with it. How should they find their center? Like my, even my character gave a lot of wisdom and uh, with, in her own way. I think we'll have wisdom, but also when you're in a rehabilitating facility of a rehab, you become wise because you feel safe. Then you start to become yourself because you're sort of your problem is gone because you are there. So to encourage you to give some uh, beauty there, give some uh, wisdom, give some encouragement there. I think it's a lot of message there. And with the series itself, um, you know, it, it does touch a lot upon mental illness and it's not making fun of it, but it is using it as a humorous slant. Do you think that helps bring light to certain mental issues as well instead of just, you know, Poke, either making everybody feel depressed about them or poking fun at them? I think uh, in a way, because you have to have a humor, you have to relate to everybody else. 
like whoever have the mental issue or they don't even know they have it, you have to relate to them first. That means humor, through humor. And they think, oh, I, I behave that way. I think that way. I do things that way. So when you're doing that, they're already connected. Then they can be uh, open to you. They can be healed from you because you're open, you, you let them free. I think it's a freedom to, for the acceptance. If you accept them, all of them are accepted, then they can go with your thoughts. I think in today's world, because the pandemic, all of that, I think a lot of us lost, lost um, sort of like hope and the future and we don't, we have nothing to hold on to. I think Bobby Rehab in a way actually tells the true story of how people are lost and how people survive, they have to use humor. If they don't kill themselves, they have to find humor to live, you know? That's basically what it is. It shows the chaotic of really internal of chaotic of a human psychology. I think it's a, it's not making fun of it. It's the truth actually in a in a very comic way to display to show people uh, that's what we do. If we are really showing ourselves without you know covered without if there's no camera no curtain that's what you do at home by yourself. Yeah. Uh, with the series like this, you know, it's a, it's a limited cast. It's a, it's a small set. And, you know, there's some outdoor shots as well, obviously in the, you know, oh, well, running around the city. Uh, was this shot during the pandemic or was this pre pandemic and is now getting released? I think it is a shot before pandemic and then start a pandemic. It's basically in the time after people are starting getting panic, it starts to getting nervous and then worried about something will happen. And I think somehow, you know, the pop culture, I think this is a very pop culture of a TV show. And it's not serious, but a lot of fun. But when you really watch it, there's a lot of wisdom and a lot of uh, things are related to everybody can find themselves there. Actually, during the pandemic, I made a film called My Quarantine Romance with toilet paper. It's like this, my film is shot in this time, in the crucial highs of the COVID time. It's, it's about the craziness, the loneliness, how you deal with loneliness, how you deal with the extreme um, when you're about to lose in your mind. I think kind of the same serial, but mine is more uh, is ethereal, but mine is more extreme, it's comedy. You have to throw comedy. I don't want to do, you know, tragedy because comedy through humor is like Charlie Chaplin. I play Chop Chaplin in my movie. So I directed it myself. I made myself direct a debut film. I directed, write it, start a producer because when you're mentally uh, lost, you sort of are losing hold of a reality of life you have to do something, otherwise you go crazy. Like those people in the mental facility, they have to do something. But for me as a person, pop culture, whatever I can, what I did is I made a film, but the film represent how crazy, how insane, how wild, how bizarre people will behave, how sexy, how much you long for this intimacy of sexy, all of that, because pandemic separated us. I think in this rehabilitation facility, that's what you do, you, you're, follow your order, you don't have your freedoms, then how you behave, what you're gonna talk about. Like even a lot of things that are shooting me just spontaneous happen, I just do it, I just go, the camera just follow me. I think it's kind of fun because there's not a lot of realness to it. There's a lot of a real humor that spontaneously this show picked up. So it's silly, it's funny, but a lot of, uh, actually believe it or not, a lot of wisdom, a lot, lot of uh, profoundness behind to be daring to show you boldness of how people going to be in a larger sense of comic way. And how were you able to keep yourself mentally healthy through all of this, especially the last two years? Well, uh, just so you know, I mentally, I never uh, into human, um, how do you say, human's judgment, I never was real, never was normal. I'm always crazy. Everybody's fighting is crazy. Actually, my word, I'm very, very normal. I'm, I have a lot of joy. I have, that's why I become like fashion, my fashion. Look at behind the pictures. My fashion, my film, even my film, if you see my quarantine romance with toilet paper, there's a lot of boldness of magic. And I think uh, like Van Gogh, like Picasso, all of these people, um, they, are, they are insane. They're crazy. They're extreme. Therefore, they create this genius art. I think I'm sort of like that. So they were never normal. Normal is born. Normal means you follow society, you follow the rules. You don't even know what you're following. So you basically lose your wisdom. You lose your control. You lose who you are. That's what society do to you. This pandemic actually in a way frees you because I made a movie. Can you believe it? I never thought I would have made a movie. My fans asked me, you say, Balin, you don't have money. You don't have script. 
how you make movies. Steven Spielberg wouldn't do it. My answer was, and also during this very dangerous time, I said, because I'm violin, because I have a universe behind me. So you have to take it. You have to jump on le leap of faith. You have to have faith because the faith is nothing you can grab. You can see, you just have to go blindly. So that's something genius do. That's something great artists do because they just follow, follow their vision. You, they don't know what's going to be like, but you have to go. On the other hand, in normal society, they think you're mental illness. You're not healthy. I think as long as you're not harming anybody, as long as you can function, you don't have to take drugs. You don't have to, you, you cannot endure these hours. You can endure those hours without doing anything or damage yourself. That's not he, he, um, mental problem. I think that just somehow you find a balance to live both ways. Our capability as humans so powerful. We can do anything. It's only because you follow society's rules, but your mental um, disorder is so strong, you cannot deal with it. Then you have to kill yourself. You have to do some drugs. But if you find balance, it's a beautiful dancing back to force. You can be in society and not hurt anybody. You can go to your crazy mind to create something passionate about. You're passionate about. Was it easier having that mentality grow up with having artist parents? I read your father was a musician and your mother was a dancer, so they were in the arts as well. Yeah, I think I was a child. I grew up in a communist country, right? They always tell me, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do it. Always don't. I keep writing apology letters to my teacher, my parents, my army leader, my country leader. I'm always doing something wrong, but I'm not hurting anybody. I'm just doing things different. So um, I, I feel like... Uh, I'm like this wild animal, like I, this, this lifetime adopted into human body. I actually don't know how to behave, but there's beautiful, passionate spirit behind, she just want to go. Therefore, I have no boundaries. You know, in the, in the Asian culture where I grew up, there's a lot of boundaries, a lot of, uh, my parents are, are my mom, conservative, conservative, comparative literature. She was a dancer before in the army. My father teaches composition, so they're very, how do you say, academy, they always want us to study. I try to learn ballet, learn gymnastics, they forbid me to do it. I have to hide it because in that society, if you're an actress, you're entertaining rich people, you're considered low class, like a prostitute. You know, it's like, it's my fate, it's my fashion, my destiny, I have to go. So nothing can stop me, so I'm still doing it. It's by, it's pure to follow your nature. Otherwise, if I don't follow my nature, actually, I, when I was a child, I was mute, I couldn't talk. I was scared of human beings. I just could not talk. Then I said, there's a rich world inside of me. If you don't find a way, if I don't find a way to express, it will explode like a volcano. So I find to be actress acting as a way to escape because I'm playing another role. So I'm pretending other role. So other people know it's not me, but to me, it's me. It's real me. That's why I'm good because I'm giving the real honest me to the film. So that's, the, everybody have their own way to deal with it. But for me, it's like, I am crazy, I'm insane, but I find a way I can function. I never laid on set, always do my job, learn my life. But also on the other hand, I do my fashion, I dance, I make my own movie. This is a magic movie, my quarantine romance with toilet paper. So those things I do are not harm anybody, but use that craziness, create something. If you're not crazy, if you're too normal, you can't be a creator you can contribute your gift to society. Is it more freeing when you can sit there and admit, you know, either you feel that you're crazy or that, uh, you know, is, you're allowed to express yourself this way because you, you claim to be crazy, whereas other people hide their, their either mental uh, instabilities or try to sit there and suppress everything that society told them they shouldn't express it as themselves? I think the only thing that's, uh, for me, is the difference. I'm kind of ignorant. So I, I don't really, uh, it's not, I, I don't care. I really don't care. I'm not aware of. So I really live in my own world. I don't watch TV. I don't, you know, I watch some movies for fun. So I like real life, real juicing of life, talking to people, living real life. And uh, I'm not aware of what should I or should, should I not, or what the Hollywood's like, what the pop culture, like, what other people do. I'm really not aware of, I think if my, I keep my universe pure, magical, the world around me will be magical because I, I deleted all the hatred words like hate, mm -hmm. jealousy, like uh, 
you know, whatever negative words is all out of my life. So therefore I don't encounter with them. So my word is very simple now. I don't read. I don't, I don't really do nothing. I just be by myself, follow my instinct. Like today I'm shooting later, I go to the beach, you know, dancing around. I think but I'm connected to the universe. Like I never was a writing, writer, right? Never directed, but it just come to me so easily because I feel like I'm downloading. You know, there's a library, there's a genius out there. So if you're connected, give you all the wisdom. I don't have to worry. I don't have to study. I don't have to know nothing. Something I don't know, but I know, I know. That's magic because you're just connected to the magic. You, you're endless sources of magic. You're endless source of the things you want to achieve, want to give. Like love, you give more, you have more. It's like a cycle, you know, whatever you excess more, you gain more, you always come, always come. So exercise like positive energies, then your word will be positive. For me, it's like, um, I'm not comparing. A lot of people say, Biden, who's your competition? I say, I have none. I say, you have none? I say, yeah, because everybody's individual. I'm individual. You know, if it's mine, it's mine. If they're, if theirs is never mind, why would I be bothered by it? There's always chance the universe is so rich. They have enough of gift, gift, opportunity, and money, prosperity for everyone. So we don't have to buy. So I'm not worried. I just live life in a very simple, peaceful, beautiful way. Let magic dancing through me. And, you know, it's all my gift to the world, to people, to entertain them, to encourage them, to inspire them. And with the series like Barbie Rehab, you're allowed to, to be free and express yourself and be humorous and still be sexy and still be fun. Uh, does that make it more appealing when you can do something more comedic versus something more dramatic? Actually, that piece was, uh, I didn't know the project was Tom Sizemore. So we're friends, right? He called me, he asked me to help to do a project for whatever the reason, right? I say, okay, it's you, I'll help. You know, people help each other. I jump into it. I did not get paid for it. Can you believe I do things like that? And they said, whatever, the, if we eventually sell it, I would get some money. I, I did it for free. But for the spirit of giving, for the spirit of helping, and of course the role, because I mean, they were so excited. It's just basically, there's no script, just whatever I do, sort of. There's script of legally, but whatever I do, I behave in a situation. I just spontaneously, be Bailin, basically it's Bobby, China by Bobby, right? It's me, it's my spirit because in the, because I'm crazy in the character because I have to be rehabbed, right? And I have to be crazy, therefore it's perfect for me to have fun, to just act out loud who I am, you know, within a limited because I'm not hurting anybody. Just crazy, but it's so much fun because in, the show needed a spirit, it needed somebody really show in the humor. You don't know if she's really crazy because she's from somewhere else, she just behaves different. I think it's spirit. I, I, I haven't watched it. I watch a little clip. So much fun. I like it. I remember what I've done. And it's so funny. I landed from the moon. They show that. <laughs> then I was jumping around. I have the binoculars watching everybody. Don't understand things. I think, uh, you know, for me, it's like amusement park. I'm dancing in. So, of course, you get, it's great. You get paid for. But sometimes you do job for others you help them help the new young filmmakers who need a name need talent need help so basically this one's my gift to them to helping them to make this show possible well you know that that's generous of you to work for free in something like this and still be able to make it possible and still make it fun yeah uh you know the it's seven episodes are there some, some things from the shooting like what was the shooting schedule like in order to produce this I think they, they've shot a lot before without us, just whatever they're doing, having fun, having all these girls. When they have Tom and me on there, so they re, re shot a lot of things with them, have meetings and interact with them. The schedule is like, uh, of course, they, they have to, according to my schedule, you have time because I'm doing it for free, right? So the first time I'm doing a TV show, but this is like a small budget, you know, where people just having fun, see where it goes. It's a spirit of dedication and fun. Humor, not, I love comedy, like crank too, I'm just crazy. So the schedule's like whatever, I have time, it's about in, this is a Tuesday, Wednesday or Saturday, which day you're free, so I tell them, then we schedule, we meet somewhere, we shoot. It's all like that throughout, I think the month is different times we shot it. It's not like same time, month, like continuous, it's not like that. You know, by it's a fun series. You're still working. You're still living your life. You're still enjoying yourself. It's 
you know, thrilling to see that that you're out there working and making magic, as you so eloquently put it. Uh, you know, before I let you go, where can we find you on social media if we want to try to connect with you? Back to back, three movies. I have another three movies like shooting in Europe, England, also in Asia, Hong Kong. I'm very blessed. I thank universe for that. So people can find me uh, Instagram at I am Bailing. So I give fat free, sugar free cookies. And also my Twitter, Real Bailing, my Facebook, I am Bailing, official Bailing. I don't know which one, but you'll find me through this. It's Chinese, you find me, Weibo, Bailing, Weibo. So I'm very excited. I hope people will watch the show because a lot of fun, a lot of yourself in it. Just have fun. Uh, don't take it seriously. Just have a blast of joy and with a lot of friends, drink, uh, laughing, and eating pizza. I think it's something, you know, it's really can make you laugh, entertain.